And did you see the one where P PETA uh, put out a statement that you shouldn't kick robots? Probably not wise. <laughs> <laughs> For retribution. Their, their memory is very good. Are you honestly legitimately concerned about this? Are you Is like AI one of your main worries in regards to the future? Yes, it's less of a worry than it used to be, uh, mostly due to taking more of a fatalistic attitude. So you used to have more hope and you gave up some of it and now you don't worry as much about AI. You're like... This is just what it is. Yeah, pretty much. Yes. Hmm. Yes. What? Yes. No, no, it's, it's, but no, it's not necessarily bad. It's definitely going to be outside of human control. Not necessarily bad, right? Yes. Yeah, not. It's not necessarily bad. It's just. It's just outside of human control. Now, the thing that's going to be tricky here is that it's going to be very tempting to use AI as a weapon. It's going to be very tempting. In fact will be used as a weapon. The on-ramp to serious AI, the danger is going to be more humans using it against each other, I think, most likely. That'll be the danger. How far away are we some from something that's really, truly sentient? Well, I mean, you could argue that any group of people, like, like a, a company is essentially a, a cybernetic collective of people and machines. That's what a company is. There's different levels of complexity in the way these companies are formed. There's this sort of like a collective AI in the Google sort of search where we're all sort of plugged in as like, like nodes on the network, like leaves on a big tree, all f and we're all, we're all feeding this network without questions and answers. We're all collectively programming the AI and Google plus the, all the humans that connect to it are one giant cybernetic collective. This is also true of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these social networks. They're giant cybernetic collectives. It humans all... and electronics all interfacing and constantly now, constantly connected. Yes, constantly. Well, we're constantly expecting the newest cell phone, the latest Tesla update, the newest MacBook Pro. We're, we're, everything has to be newer and better. And that's going to lead to some incredible point. It seems like it's built into us. It almost seems like it's a, an instinct that we, we're working towards this, that we like it. Just like the answer build the anthill. Our job is to somehow another fuel this. Yes. When I made those comments some, some years ago, it feels like we are the biological bootloader for AI. And then we're building progressively greater intelligence. And the percentage of intelligence that is not human is increasing. And eventually, we will represent a very small percentage of intelligence. The AI is informed, strangely, by the human limbic system, in large part, our id writ large. How so? We mentioned all those things, the primal drives, mm -hmm. all the things that we like and hate and fear. They're all there on the internet. They're a projection of our limbic system. <laughs> It, no, it makes sense. Thinking of corporations and just thinking of just human beings communicating online through these social media networks as some sort of an organism that's a, it's a cyborg. It's a combination of electronics and biology. Yeah. This is... In, in, some, in some measure, like, it's the, the success of these online systems is sort of a function of how much limbic resonance they're able to achieve with people. The more limbic resonance, the more engagement. So what happened with you where you decided, took on a more fatalistic attitude? Like, what, was there any specific thing or was it just the inevitability of our future? I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. This seems Nobody like a listened. scene in a movie Nobody where listened. the robots are going to fucking take over and you're freaking me out. Nobody listened. Nobody listened. No one. So different. once it's implemented, it's very different because it, it will once be able to... Once the out of the bottle, what's right. going to happen? And it will be able to improve itself. Yes. That's where it gets spooky, right? The idea that it can do thousands of years of innovation very, very quickly. Yeah. And then we'll be just ridiculous. Ridiculous. We will be like this ridiculous biological shitting, pissing thing trying to stop the gods. It could be terrible and it could be great. It's not clear. Right. But one thing is for sure, we will not control it. Oh man, I feel so cheerful after listening to that again. Oh my God. The clip that I just showed you is from an interview that Elon Musk had with Joe Rogan back in September of 2018 on the Joe Rogan Experience, where they talked about the dangers of AI and Elon's concern for AI safety in particular. And since the deal has been made public, there has been a lot of speculation on what Elon's long-term goals are for the company. The messaging for why this acquisition is taking place is primarily around the issue of free speech to ensure that there's a forum online where free speech 
speech can be practiced fully. And even though there's been a lot of public back and forth between Twitter and Elon, which is a very unorthodox way to say the least when trying to make an acquisition happen, I think this 100% happens because of the clip we just watched. I think this is Elon's key play to ensure the AI safety discussion happens and it happens as quickly as humanly possible. Now, in a world where the acquisition is finalized and we fast forward through to five years, Twitter is likely to be one of the largest social media platforms on the planet. And you can draw a lot of parallels between this acquisition of Twitter and the other companies that Elon has started and is currently running. They have started with an initial goal that then transform over time. Take Tesla as the perfect example. They started as a company whose sole purpose was to drive the advent of sustainable transport. And now they've transformed themselves into a company who's a leader in AI with full self-driving and the bot here in the next couple of years. SpaceX is pretty similar. They started as a company whose goal was to lower the cost to space as much as possible. And now they're utilizing that technology and that vision to get people to Mars with Starship. Neuralink is starting as a project that's going to help people regain some of their limbic movements and other things that are health related. But the long term goals of this company is to allow people to communicate with each other with their brains <laughs> without saying any words, essentially to maximize the bandwidth of information between humans and the Internet. And if you take SpaceX and Tesla specifically as an example, those two companies are the largest companies in their industry by far. Tesla is by far the largest automaker of electric vehicles with the hopes of being the largest automaker period in the next few years. And SpaceX is by far the most affordable and largest rocket company in the world. It stands to reason that Twitter will become one of the largest social media platforms, if not the largest social media platform within three to five years after Elon Musk finalizes the acquisition. And within that world, you have an environment where now you have the largest public square of the internet. Given Elon's track record of really maximizing the potential of his companies, Twitter is likely to be the place for humanity to be online and share ideas and transform information from one person to another. But in this arena of potentially billions of people, you're going to need very advanced AI and software to help you run this business. In the example of Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, all these other companies, most of those companies are run by algorithms that choose what to show you based on your behavior. That is a form of AI that if left unchecked could cause a lot of harm to society. We have already seen this in our society today where folks can be trapped in an echo chamber that keeps feeding them the same information over and over again. And there's a potential that these echo chambers could cause the slow demise of civilization in a way. This might sound like hyperbole, but there has been a rise in division since the birth of social media. And many are correlating these algorithms to the reason why we've been so divided as a country and a species. If you enjoy what you're watching so far, I would love it if you throw me a like. It helps the YouTube algorithm show this to more people. Thank you very much. <laughs> in a world where Twitter could potentially have billions of Twitter users, AI has to be deployed in order to ensure that the content on that website is legal, especially for each jurisdiction that Twitter will exist in. And as you can already see, Elon has a ton of notoriety behind him. Every single move that he makes is heavily scrutinized by media and people. It's celebrated by some camps. It's discounted by other camps. And he also has a lot of camps that are actively going against him. What this does is brings a lot of attention to him as a person. But ultimately, what this is going to do is bring a lot of attention from governments and jurisdictions to ensure that the companies that he's running, especially Twitter in this case, are doing so in a right way. Now, one of the fascinating things about this is that this will give Elon a massive forum with world leaders. And if you recall a part of the clip that I showed at the beginning of this video, Elon has tried in the past to have conversations with many different parties about AI safety and how important it is for humanity. But unfortunately, he was either dismissed or not listened to according to his story. Now, what's really interesting about this Twitter play and the fact that it's primarily a free speech move is that I wonder how much this free speech terminology is a non-abstract way for people to understand the dangers of AI safety. And although you can make the argument that a majority of these bannings or the blocking of accounts or the suspension of accounts is done by human beings, if you scale this software up to billions of people, it's going to be impossible for individuals to sift through content and ensure that it's abiding by the guidelines of those jurisdictions. Within this context, the discussion of AI safety becomes paramount because the last thing you want is to have software or AI that is so advanced that humans do not understand exactly what it's doing. And what you don't want is to have the slow erosion of our society through pinning people against each other. One could make the argument that this is already happening and why the discussion around AI safety is so, so important already. 
And you also have to think about how many times Elon has mentioned that if something is really important and he views as super, super important that it has to get done. Within this context, the Twitter acquisition makes even more sense because if we paint it within the picture of AI safety and how much he's been trying to push that narrative, this could be the perfect time to really drive that movement forward. And I'm sure the AI work that they've been doing in Tesla is bringing up a ton of warning signs of how AI could potentially hurt humanity in a way. And having access to Twitter or any other social media platform that is super public and humans can use on a daily basis is gonna be extremely important to further that AI safety conversation. At the core, it's innovative problem solving. Is AI safety a problem that has to be solved? And do we require innovative steps to get there? And I'm constantly looking for innovative companies and innovative approaches to solving problems. And one of those companies is Masterworks. Masterworks allows anyone to purchase fractional shares in art pieces from artists such as Picasso, Basquiat, Banksy, and more. Artists like these have works that are inaccessible to most of the population due to their very expensive price tag, but Masterworks allows anyone to capitalize on the potential value growth of these assets. Think of it as a democratization of art where a lot of us can pull our money together and purchase seminal artwork created by the most brilliant minds of the human species. And in a time of high inflation, finding assets that preserve or grow one's wealth is incredibly important. Luckily, Masterworks has returned over 30% to investors on each of the art pieces that they've bought and sold since 2017 thanks to their 75-year art buying experience. In addition, there are studies that show art being one of the least correlated asset classes to stocks and bonds, which can act as a great inflation hedge. If this jumps out to you as an opportunity, go to masterworks.art slash Farzad Mesbahi. That will allow you to jump ahead of the waitlist and start investing with a community of 400,000 investors. Thank you very much to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. And most importantly, thank you for your continued support of this channel. Now, if we extend this innovative approach to solving problems, I think Twitter is also becoming a huge way for Elon to drive the adoption of cryptocurrency, in this case, Dogecoin. Now, although it's extremely easy to make fun of Elon for his Dogecoin obsession and the fact that this is something that was initially made as a joke, there is something to be said for the fact that his company, Tesla, currently accepts Dogecoin payments for some merch. I ended up buying one of these cyber whistles, I think it was Saturday or Sunday, for 645 Doge, which is like 55 bucks. Overpriced for a whistle, obviously. And although I'm not going to use this to referee any sporting events, I'm sure it's going to be something cool to just keep around. But again, if you take the fact that Twitter will likely become one of the largest social media platforms in the world if this acquisition goes through, you're going to have billions of people connected to each other where you can use Dogecoin as a form of currency to transfer value from one person to another. But more importantly, Twitter will become a very important test bed for the currency. The Twitter user base will be billions of people that you can utilize as a test bed to ensure Dogecoin or whatever other currency is capable of being an actual currency. You can transfer payments from one user to another. You could use it to pay to promote tweets. You can use it to pay creators on the platform for, I don't know, videos or whatever. Who knows? This could become a YouTube competitor long term. But I'm sure you can see how there's going to be multiple ways to transfer value from one user to another. And with Twitter being a global company, it's going to make it very easy to transfer value between people without any borders. And given that one of the primary targets for this acquisition is to move away from an ad revenue model, it's going to give the Twitter team and Elon a lot of different ways to come up with innovative ideas on how to monetize the platform. Having something like Dogecoin is going to enable you to have a lot of microtransactions potentially, given that there's going to be millions and millions of tweets created every day. I don't even know how many are created every day. This really gives you the ability to really push a ton of transactions through that payment network. But ultimately, if you take those two things together, if you take the Dogecoin example, but especially the AI safety example, this is yet another way where Elon's trying to solve multiple problems with one of his companies. There's an abstract nature to AI safety. There's an abstract nature to cryptocurrency. These are things that are still not well understood by society, especially, especially the AI safety piece. And I really do think that the movement towards Twitter or acquiring any social media platform is a move to try and remove the abstract nature of such a danger and really get the conversation going in an earnest way. It's a necessary step for us to really understand what we're dealing with here. And although none of us have any idea how these things are going to end up, I think this general direction makes a ton of sense. And it's extremely important for us to go towards that direction. At the very least, I hope it continues to drive a very important discussion to ensure that the future of our society is kept safe. But I would love to hear your opinion too. What do you think? Am I again thinking crazy, <laughs> crazy sometimes with these things that 
I don't know, are a little bit more abstract in nature. I might be a little bit too optimistic or I'm thinking, you know, maybe in a way too positive manner or trying to extrapolate things out, uh, you know, incorrectly. So this is where I love for your input in the comments. Tell me where I'm thinking about this incorrectly. Tell me where I'm thinking about this potentially correctly. But at the very least, let's have a discussion in the comments and see what comes out of it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to support the channel, I have a bunch of different ways you can do that on my description. You can either join me as a patron member, you can join the channel through clicking on join right below this video, or you can use the link in my description to purchase Athletic Greens, which is a supplement that I use every single morning, which I really, really trust. And before we wrap it up, if you'd like to submit your music to be played on this channel, you can send me an email right here at info at gmail.com. Thank you very much. I hope you have a great day and enjoy the song. Take it easy. Bye-bye.